Hello, this is Bob Fidalski again from Titanians.org, and I want to take a few minutes to talk with you briefly about war. Many people think that war is the worst atrocity on the planet, and we'll get to whether or not it is in a minute, but I want to dispel the notion that wars are fought for noble reasons. Okay, this is what we're told, this is what government says. It is our duty, it is our responsibility, etc., etc., etc. Nonsense. There's only one reason why wars are ever fought. They are fought for the control of resources. And those resources might include oil, natural gas, minerals, arable land, uh, access to a seaport, and slaves. Slaves are resources for which many wars have been fought. And history makes this very clear. When you study history closely, you find that this is so. So if you have had any notions about wars are fought for noble reasons, you're in the matrix. Okay, anyone who thinks that is in the matrix. Get out of the matrix. Recognize wars are fought for control of resources. Now, I hinted a moment ago that war might not be the worst atrocity that is taking place on the planet. Because wars are initiated by people who have a tremendous amount of control. How do they get the control? The people who have that control have formed what I call power brokerage cartels. This is what government is. Government any government is a power brokerage cartel. A cartel, you understand, is simply a monopoly. A cartel is a monopoly that exists. It's a shared monopoly that exists for just two purposes. To maximize profits of the members and maximize the power or control they have to remain a shared monopoly. They don't, you know, they're, they control their turf, shall we say. Okay? Power brokerage is simply a group of people decide they own all the power and they're going to delegate some of it to others to do their bidding. For example, if you were king, you might hire a tax collector. And the tax collector goes out and collects your taxes, and you make your armed forces available to the tax collector, and uh, he gets something out of it. The tax collector gets a share of the loot, and you get other people doing your dirty work for you. And that's delegation of authority, and the tax collector probably doesn't go out and collect taxes himself. He hires a bunch of thugs to go out and do it for him and gives them authority to do it. So this sequential delegation of authority, mind you, I didn't say delegation of rights because we, no one has a right to do that, but authority, power, delegated power, that's power brokerage, and it universally involves hierarchy. Stepping down, 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 down from those who have the most power some people will do a lot of dirty work for a little power and some loot. And that's how that works. So the underlying piece in terms of what's really happening in order for wars to happen and other atrocities to happen is the taxation. Now a lot of people have this notion that taxation is just the natural way of things. In this country, we went a long time without taxes without income taxes especially. It wasn't until the year 1913 when the Federal Reserve was created that the IRS was created simultaneously. Because when the Federal Reserve creates money out of nothing, I mean, it's like they, have, they write a check to the Treasury and money is created because there's no account and no assets in an account against which the check is written, it's just a piece of paper. They write the piece of paper. Suddenly, 
the U.S. Treasury has money. Wow. <clears throat> this is a very evil thing. Anyway, so getting back to the taxation per se, taxation is one group of people taking resources away from another group of people for their own use and for other people's use. Now, I have a what I call a theorem. My theorem is, Podolsky's theorem, is that whenever some action is taken that depends upon taxation, the outcome is worse. In other words, you have an unethical outcome every time that happens. So you can't expect to have good things happen as a result of taxes. It irritates the hell out of me when I hear, for example, someone saying, oh yes, drugs should be legalized and taxed. Whoa, I got, I'm with you as far as legalized, but taxed? Absurd. Why would anyone say that? They should just be legalized, period. <laughs> as far as taxes go, no good works ever done by means of taxes wasn't unethical. In other words, you can't do, and this is a basic ethical principle, you cannot, under any circumstances, achieve ethical ends by unethical means. And if you believe otherwise, go back to titanians.org. There is an article about this, ethical ends and ethical means, in which I offer three conclusive proofs that, in fact, ethical ends can only be achieved by ethical means. And in fact, if you look at it still more closely, every ethical means has to be an ethical end in itself. Otherwise, it's not an ethical means. In case you haven't seen the earlier video, an ethical act is an act which increases creativity or any of its logical equivalents for at least one person, including the person acting, without limiting or diminishing creativity for anyone. So even if a million people benefit by an act, if one person is harmed and their creativity diminished, that act is unethical. Now that may be counterintuitive for a lot of people, but then a lot of people have been really brainwashed into thinking that the majority rule is a good thing. It's not. Never has. Okay, coming back to taxation. There are several interesting ways of looking at taxation. And the way I like to look at it, of the several ways that are appear in, in, in the website, suppose I was a slave owner in the Old South, and you, my audience, are slaves. And one day I say, hey guys, the day has come, I'm going to set you all free. Oh, you'd be glad of that. However, there's some limitations. Here's the deal. You're going to be able to work anywhere you like. You can do any kind of work you like. You can work for any employer you like. You can even work for yourself. Wow. However, I don't like having to pay you pay for your well-being. I don't like to have to pay to feed you and house you and bring the doctor in if you get sick and all that stuff. So you're going to have to pay all those expenses yourself. And you're going to have to carry some means around with you by means of which I can track where you're working, how much you are earning, and so forth. And a portion of your earnings is going to come back to me to reimburse me for all these years that I have supported you and fed you and clothed you and housed you isn't this a great deal? You're going to pay it back to me, and it's only going to cost 50% of your income. 50%? Maybe you didn't know you're paying 50%. But if you add up all the taxes that the average person pays, 50% of your income, at least in this country, and more in some countries, but here it's a little over 50% of your income gets collected by the tax collector. Well, which tax collector? And which tax? You know you don't pay any one tax that's that much. Well, there are three kinds of taxes. There are the direct taxes. What are they? Well, direct taxes are things like income tax, property tax, hmm, uh, 
Some states have their own state income tax, which you may be paying. And beyond that, there's fees that you pay for the privilege of fishing, hunting, driving a car, owning a car, and so on and so on and so on. Oh, having a profession. Licensing fees for all the professions. Urgh. Evil stuff. Evil stuff. Anyway, those are direct taxes. Then there are indirect taxes. What are they? Well, corporations who either manufacture or import things that you buy, they have to pay taxes, tariffs, import taxes, duties, uh, corporation taxes, etc., etc. Who do you think pays for those? Well, all those fees, which are indirect taxes, come back to you as a consumer. When you buy a product and the company that sold it to you is making a profit, they've covered all those expenses, all those fees, all those taxes are covered by your paying them a higher price for their goods. That's an indirect tax. Now, there are also hidden taxes. What's a hidden tax? That's the most insidious kind of all. As of all. Every time the Federal Reserve creates money out of nothing, as they always do. They don't give it to the government. They lend it to the government. And that's why the IRS was created, so that the government could pay the interest on the money created out of nothing that the Federal Reserve, or other central bank in other countries, has created for their use. Now what happens? Well, first of all, a lot of the money you pay in taxes goes towards paying the interest. But on top of that, there's a natural balance between all the money available in a given country and all the goods and services available to be purchased. There's a natural balance. If you create more money, then goods and services haven't changed, and so what happens is the price appears to rise of the goods and services until a balance is reached again and all the money just buys all the goods and services. Natural balance. It's the effect of the marketplace, if you will. Here's an example. When I was a young man, I took a woman out on a date and we had a one pound lobster tail each with all the trimmings, side dishes, glass of wine, a cocktail, wonderful dessert, and the whole meal for the two of us cost about 12 bucks. Have prices risen? Has the value of these things risen? No. What has happened is the value of the money's gone down. Oh, yeah. When my father was that age, he was working and going to school in California. He had a restaurant he'd go to for lunch. He would get a ham sandwich that was all he could eat and a huge mug of beer for a nickel. Again, has the value of these things changed? No, the value of the money has gone down, hugely gone down. How does that work? Well, when the money is created by the Federal Reserve, its buying power is a dollar for a dollar. But by the time it gets paid out to contractors and employees and it spreads out in the community, all the dollars in the world then, or in the country, their value is all diluted because there's too much money for the amount of goods and services. That's a hidden tax. Every time they do it, you are being taxed. Quite simple. Okay, so that's all for right now. For more information, go to titanians.org, where all of these subjects are covered in considerable detail.